guess what? <laughs> it's a bull. Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in absolutely gorgeous Lauderdale by the sea. Look, it's like 57 degrees out this morning. Uh, all the true Floridians, not this guy right here or these people, those are Canadians probably. <laughs> uh, all the true Floridians have jackets on today and, and wool hats. So, uh, and like I said, these must be Canadians out here. They're the only ones that go out without shirts in 57 degree weather. So, <laughs> well, anyways, beautiful day here. Just absolutely lovely too. And I like the cold weather, even though I don't have a jacket on, but uh, I'm certainly kind of bundled up with a t-shirt and a shirt so um, I am pretty much Floridian not that bad though <laughs> no jackets well let's take a look and see uh, what's going on in markets today but before I do that I told you my meme for the year my meme my little saying was going to be uh, part of my everyday thing is think for yourself and always question authority I don't need to explain this to you it's pretty much self-explanatory old saying by Timothy Leary and, you know and there's reasons for that I mean uh, I like this little uh, 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 meme that I saw I think I forget the guy that does it um, God what's his name he's he's uh, uh, kind of a cartoonist guy but no less uh, I didn't even notice afterwards but I saw the uh, lips of liberty sewn up um, and uh, then and I didn't notice till later but look there's the Twitter bird kind of overlaid over it and this really does say a lot folks uh, this tells more or less what you're seeing with big social media and you're seeing with uh, uh, the alphabet group and of uh, anybody that that deals with online stuff and allowing the public to talk to each other they don't want you to think for yourself folks they don't want you to question authority they want you to think what they tell you to think they want you not to question what they're doing uh, but they want to question what you're doing so again think for yourself and question authority teach your friends your family your kids uh, to do that, even the doggies and kitties. <laughs> no, no, you don't want dogs and cats thinking for themselves. Uh, they already do, I'm only kidding. But uh, uh, really, folks, this is going to be my uh, theme for the next year. Think for yourself and question authority. Uh, and I hope you can make it your theme as well. Well, let's take a look at the uh, spot prices here and see what's going on in uh, precious metal markets. Everything's kind of up across the board. I'm really surprised we haven't seen any monkey hammering yet. However, tomorrow is still New Year's, I mean, uh, Christmas Eve and uh, it's usually a thinly traded day so let's see what happens tomorrow uh, if we see strength through tomorrow I'm kind of be somewhat surprised especially in silver more than anything but uh, um, <clears throat> you know again usually on holidays they really hammer the gold and silver markets typically in comics uh, so a lot of unusual stuff going on this past year you know the monkey hammering uh, on comics was typically done again on Fridays thinly traded markets uh, Sunday nights on the Globex markets um, you know, Monday mornings before New York Open. You know, they had very specific time frames. Um, when 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 the uh, the big banks, you know, the big commercial banks and comics would would nail the price of gold and silver, and they would do it around you know went around the Fed speak time. You know, if the Fed was going to make major announcements on uh, rate cuts or whatever it may be, or the bullshit about rate cuts, not rate cuts, but uh, 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 stopping tapering or whatever the hell it is, tapering and uh, uh, raising rates. All right. Uh, so job owning more or less and we've had our discussions about job owning so uh, where was I going with that <laughs> it's the same old stuff every day but uh, no less uh, uh, the Fed is uh, 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 that's when they would typically monkey ham sorry lost my train of thought there that's typically when these markets would get monkey hammered uh, again around Fed speak time thinly traded hours and uh, during uh, Fridays and uh, Sunday nights but it hasn't been like that lately. I haven't seen much monkey hammering in the Globex markets on, on uh, Sunday night, presuming that's where it was happening. I uh, haven't seen the big monkey hammering on the thinly, uh, you know, on, uh, on the holidays uh, this week yet. I suspected this week we'd see big monkey hammering, but not really. Uh, but again, tomorrow might, you know, tomorrow and next week will kind of tell. Uh, so let's see what happens with the price of silver and see if these big commercial banks monkey hammer it in Comex. Meanwhile, what do we got going on here? We've got 1808 currently. I'm going to do a quick refresh. This is a static screen. A screen. Uh, 1807.74. So uh, we've got a range kind of sitting around that 1800 since yesterday and uh, a high of 1810, $10 range. I won't say range bound, but I like these little uh, small increments, uh, you know, $10 up on gold and, and a little bit up on silver. I like to see those small increments and a little pullback and small increments more. Uh, more or less, I like to see uh, 
Uh, three steps forward, maybe one back or two back at the most, but ultimately I'd like to see that we're moving forward, and we really are with precious metals, even though we kind of had a really shitty year of 2021 uh, with precious metals. But again, folks, this is all about monkey hammering, and uh, uh, of course the game is rigged, but uh, if you don't play, you can't win, and we know how the game is rigged, and the, the game is rigged for us in a positive way. i tell you how it's rigged for us is we have the long-term section. Medium, long-term, I think we, as gold and silver holders, sit in an excellent position. These little short-time dealies with these commercial banks and these uh, uh, managed money accounts that go the long positions in Comex, uh, it's, it's quick day-to-day -day kind of deals. That's how they rob that market anyway, but uh, uh, they're in and out, in and out, and ultimately, uh, unlike a lot of markets that are backed by nothing, uh, i.e. cryptos, uh, uh, gold and silver is backed by a physical product. There's actually a physical product out there. And, and the physical product on silver particularly is used in industry in such a major way you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe how much silver is used out there in silver solder and electronics and those kind of things. So um, uh, it's used, it's invested in, and uh, the price discovery that's been used with the, you know, the paper price discovery on the COMEX markets and on the, uh, uh, you know, in markets in general, you know, COMEX markets, let's say COMEX markets, um, have kept the price artificially low for years and years and years because of this monkey hammering done by the big commercial banks that COMEX allows. Uh, and it's been done for years, and the, uh, again, the real value of silver is probably so far off from what this paper value is at some point. I believe that if we have shortages, now, now people confuse, there's some people out there that are not too smart, they say, there's no shortage of silver, um, you know, there's a lot of silver above ground, you know, and that's true, there's millions and millions and millions of ounces, but, you know, what they don't get is, we're not talking about what is above ground, we're talking about what is available, okay? Um, because available versus what's above ground are two different, entirely different things. There's a lot of gold and silver investors out there that are not going to sell their silver at 30 bucks an ounce. They may not sell it at 40 or 50 even. Uh, so that silver is just unavailable. And, you know, our monthly, uh, what do they mine about, uh, I forget, almost a million ounces a year or something like that, what's mined. I think consumption of silver in the industry is, uh, uh, is getting up to that point combined with investment. So, you know, once the silver itself, the real product itself starts to dry up, the phony paper markets uh, are, have only got one choice, which is to go up. So, and I think they're, they're figuring this out, but they've known this for a long time. The, the direction of gold and silver ultimately and platinum ultimately is to the moon. It's like a roller coaster for us sometimes, even worse because of the COMEX monkey hammering bastards. But <laughs> um, it's a roller coaster to the moon, folks. So don't ever get panicked with gold and silver. Oh my God, it's going to be worthless. That's never going to happen in our lifetimes. All right, unless we plan on living a thousand years and we'll be trading latinum on another planet. So, <laughs> hey, you can tell I watch Star Trek, huh? All right, well, let's take a look at the, uh, um, well, hold on, I didn't even go to silver. <laughs> Silver's range, sorry about that. 2268, the low overnight, 2295 is the high. We're currently sitting at 2292. And uh, platinum, 961, a high of 975. And again, sitting near that 972 mark. We're closing in on a thousand, closing in on 23, and we're busted that 1800 mark pretty much today, it seems. Uh, again, let's see what happens for the rest of the year. We do have some uh, holiday trading hours uh, which, in which the uh, gold and silver markets can get monkey hammered in COMEX and elsewhere, probably bank BIS or whatever that whole deal is um, that Gata talks about who, who, manipul who manipulates the price of gold. Well, let's take a look at the, uh, where this action is happening in gold and silver. And right now I'm going to take a look at your gold bid. Uh, and of course, happening in New York. You'll see the markets are pretty much steady all night. and. There you go, New York open, and what happens? Boom, on the upside, boom, on the downside. Man, there's your roller coaster to the moon, folks. Just picture this, uh, a lot of, <laughs> uh, and, sometimes, and for new people too, gold and silver, uh, for some new folks out there, uh, older folks, I should say, is quite frightening sometimes, seeing these big spikes up and down. Uh, but again, don't panic, folks. I mean, if you're new into this market, you see it go down, or you've been holding on to it for the last year or two and you haven't liked the performance, relax, relax, relax. This is about wealth preservation. This is not about getting rich quick. If you want to get rich quick, go into cryptos. And speaking of volatility, what amazes me is that this younger generation has such a they're able to not let this volatility freak them out. I mean, they're in the crypto markets. Think about this. These 20-something-year-old 20 20 people, you know, in the 30s and stuff that uh, have been buying in the crypto markets, 
they're used to this huge volatility right here, uh, you know, up and down, up and down. So really, once I think once they understand that the crypto markets aren't really going to be their best friend in the future, you know, it'll be like a casino. And when they made their money in the crypto markets, for those small percentage that do, all right, and they make a lot of money, I think that they're going to be perfect candidates for buying gold and silver because these kind of this kind of volatility won't scare them at all. The only thing that will scare them is 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 not being in that casino environment, which is very exciting when you hit it big, you know, when Bitcoin or whatever it is just, you know, doubles, you know, not doubles, but goes up 20 and 30 percent in such a short time, uh, in a really short term time, it's like hitting a scratch off ticket. Uh, there must be some adrenaline behind that. There must be some kind of excitement behind that. And I think that's what keeps the crypto players going is the hope that they're going to get rich quick off it. And they like those big volatile. Uh, but you got to have a stomach for that. And most older folks, especially when you get older, your stomach, you don't have a big stomach for huge volatility as you're getting older. What you want is security. You know, uh, a friend of mine told me an old uh, saying that he heard from a friend of his when he was younger. You spend the first 40 years of your life making it and you spend the last 40 years of your life trying to keep it, all right? And this is what gold and silver is all about. It's about keeping it, folks. Uh, and again, not in the paper markets, in the physical markets. The paper markets, you're gonna lose one way or another, uh, whether it's through default or whether it's through just the fees that are gonna eat you up. And the uh, best way to own gold and silver is own it physically. Don't own it in the paper markets. Again, that's my opinion. Uh, unless you just are so rich that you couldn't possibly store that much silver or gold uh, safely, uh, then you might have to be into the paper markets, but pick them wisely and make sure your fees aren't too bad. Well, let's take a look at the 24 hour. Uh, uh, again, we've seen the gold chart. You can almost lay this line over the silver too. And the, I've been saying this for a long time, gold and silver follow hand in hand. If you see silver going up dramatically, gold going up dramatically and silver is not, it tells you two things. It tells you gold's too high, which in this environment, in the future environment, I can't see being the case, or silver is too low, which is most likely the case, which is absolutely the case, actually, when you figure all the, all the bullshit that goes on and what silver really should be worth. Uh, but I'm kind of curious here real quick, what is the gold and silver ratio? It's got to be above that 80 to 1 still. Uh, maybe it's tightened up with prices going up like they have with silver. Let's, uh, let's ask Siri here, one second. 1807.74 divided by 22.92. Ah, 78, 79 to 1. So we have tightened up that ratio a little bit. It was as high as 81 to 1 at one point. Uh, however, I'm kind of thinking that gold in this market for us right now will be leading the way. Silver will do something explosive and big like it always does, surprise the shit out of all of us, even me, a uh, 30, 40 year uh, professional in retail and wholesale uh, uh, physical markets. Uh, it'll surprise the hell out of me as well. Uh, so, uh, but it will follow gold, okay? Definitely will follow gold. And I think gold really is going to be the leader uh, as far as uh, investment by a lot of people, honestly, because it's easy to keep, less volatile than silver. But again, when gold keeps climbing up, it's going to bring its uh, little brother or little sibling silver with it, as we will platinum as well. Uh, palladium, we haven't talked about much palladium, but man, talk about volatility. If you like the crypto markets, you might have liked the volatility in the last couple of weeks. Um, but the problem I have with palladium, uh, I think they're going to start, the price of palladium is so crazy high. And the reason they got out of platinum as catalytic converters, when they first started doing catalytic converters, they used platinum. The reason they stopped doing it is because the price of platinum had just gone crazy compared to palladium. I, I believe, and I don't know how hard, hard it would be for them to uh, switch back to palladium uh, or platinum from the palladium markets, which would probably just create a reversal of this after all anyway. but. Uh, if they go back to platinum and catalytic converters, they'll save about half the money in a catalytic converter. That's a pretty huge saving, but I don't know what it takes to gear up, uh, 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 you know, gear up a factory to change what they put inside them. Uh, well, anyway, that's my thought on platinum and palladium for the year. And we looked at the 24-hour markets, and of course we see the 24-hour silver chart. You could overlay it on this chart. Look at that. It's almost like a ditto there. Boom, 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 boom. And, but silver's kind of made a little higher, uh, a little more on the graph here, as you can see. But uh, New York, up and down, up and down, the roller coaster to the moon. Exactly. So keep stacking silver, folks. That's my opinion. I don't think you can go wrong, especially if you buy the dips. Uh, premiums are somewhat reasonable out there, unless you're, you know, if you're paying less than a $4 plus premium for this stuff. Well, we talk about this stuff all the time. Hey, don't forget, think for yourself and question authority. <laughs> Let's move into uh, uh, Market Watch here, who I like to. It, I, 
I, I'm not even a subscriber to this page. I just kind of like the way it shows up on the screen and we can kind of look at it together. Uh, so it's pretty obvious that the uh, markets are across the board up. Is that that Santa Claus rally that they talk about? I really don't know. I know they took a big trashing, took a big trashing here last week. And uh, let's see how my little portfolios are doing here. Uh, this is my faux portfolio. This is not a real portfolio, folks. Um, I have said many times over the last couple of years that when the stock market takes a dime, I know this is a gold and silver show, um, and my ex expertise is not even remotely uh, near my expertise in gold and silver as it, you know, with uh, uh, stocks and bonds. So again, this is my faux portfolio that I'm having fun with, just looking at the numbers. Got no money invested in it. Uh, but it's stuff that I think that I'm going to look at. I'm going to start building this full portfolio, follow it. I want to start looking for stocks that when the shit hits the fan with stocks, I want to be able to, you know, that blood in the street thing. When there's blood in the streets, buy. So, you know, you can tell that I am not just a gold and silver guy. I believe in being diversified in all different markets except crypto. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to pick on you crypto guys. Remember, I'm not anti-crypto. I just understand it for what it is. It's a highly speculative casino. Um, uh, and at some point, governments and bankers who uh, hate competition are going to turn. They're not gonna, if they, they don't make it illegal, they're going to turn it into a uh, highly regulated and highly rigged uh, money market type fund. You know, that's what I see, where I see it going uh, until the Fed tries to adopt their own Fed coin. Uh, but We've done shows on that. I'm tired of talking about that shit, too. And it's near Christmas. I don't want to get depressed right now. <laughs> uh, so my portfolio, auto transportation. Uh, if any of you got some ideas on, on uh, what are good stocks I should be looking at in the future, I'm kind of looking for stocks th that will, you know, that produce goods that people actually want and that sales are creating their profits, not more money by investors being dumped into it. Does that make sense to you? Again, this is not my expertise, but if you got ideas, and uh, here's, here's how I break my, broke the stocks down too, my little portfolios, my full portfolio. Auto transportation, I didn't add Tesla in here, I probably will just to take a look at it and see how the numbers look. Uh, and a couple other car companies, I think. Uh, COVID, COVID uh, critter stocks, got critter stocks in here. Um, and these are all vaccination type stocks. Taking a look at a few of them, and yesterday I kind of did, uh, but a few of these stocks, the only reason they've done well is because of Critter 19 in 2020, uh, and they've done quite well. Uh, however, when this all starts to kind of go over, I think their stocks are going to level out a little bit until they find something new to screw with. Um, food stocks. This is BurgerFi in Florida. Uh, I, I eat there, and I actually like the place occasionally, you know what I mean? So. Uh, and I was thinking, oh, what a cool stock that might be. They're popping up all over Florida, so I put that in there. These are seafood stocks. As a fisherman, I realize that uh, seafood is getting harder and harder to source. It's going up and up in price. I wonder what effect that'll have on stocks, on uh, you know companies that, that supply seafood. That's kind of why I got them in there. That's the fisherman side of me right there in the stocks. Uh, health and uh, death stocks, this is a service corporation. I figured one of the things that always Everybody dies, something needs to be done with the body. It's not legal to do it yourself. <laughs> so, I guess I could just have my friends toss my body into the ocean, that would be my preference. But this is, uh, uh, they seem like they do well all the time. This is one of those stocks I think that, unless someone else uh, makes a comment out here and thinks I should stay away from it, this seems like one of those stocks you're just safe with, you know what I mean? As far as, uh, again, everyone dies and that's never gonna stop. Uh, and mining stocks, a lot of you guys out there listen to me, and guys and gals that listen to my uh, videos here know more about mining stocks than I do. So if you got any comments, negative or positive, or see somebody I'm missing here, uh, please put it in the comment section. And then, of course, shipping and social media and technology. I'm going to expand this list. Uh, also, if you think I should just not even include this in my videos, make a comment below. But if you like me talking about it, again, I have no expertise in this field. I'm just kind of, maybe we can all do this together and learn something. Um, Let's take a look at the uh, 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 BP price here, and it's about sideways. That volatility, though, man, that's, uh, I can see why that would be exciting. You know what I mean? You hit it low, you get a big spike, you're up, you're down. I can see why that's exciting, especially the gaming people, kids in their 20s and 30s, uh, the gaming generation, you know. They're used to video credits, digital credits, all right? They're, and, they, and, and the gaming community, for years, has already been buying stuff for their games, you know what I mean? So for example, you can buy upgrades, you know, like an upgraded gun in a game or something like that. You gotta pay real dollars for it. So this younger generation does equate 
uh, uh, video credits with real money. And I kind of think this is why they're so open to uh, uh, Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum and these type of uh, crypto base because they're used, to, again, they, they equate video credits with money uh, in numbers with money, and most people do because, uh, you know, your, your money isn't a bank, and that's just a bunch of numbers, really. Uh, but what do you own, again? Well, ah, uh, boy. All right, I don't want to <laughs> You know my opinion on that. If you're making money in it, you know how the game is rigged in uh, Bitcoin and other type uh, cryptos, then, then all the power to you. And when you make that good money in the cryptos, make sure you put some of it in gold and silver because you know it's going to be around for a long time because it has that track record. Well, let's take a look at... Uh, uh, GATA.org, every good stacker should have this on their bookmark bar uh, up here, and you should be checking the articles once a week, as well as Ted Butler, but that's a subscription only. If you want to know how the game is played, how it's rigged, who the players are, when they do it, uh, GATA.org on gold, and silver is Ted Butler is the godfather of uh, uh, silver manipulation as far as um, uh, spilling the beans, okay? Well, taxes on precious metals. Some of you in the states, here in Florida, I'm going to give you a little story real quick here. Here in Florida, we have no sales tax uh, on uh, precious metals. All right, this article right here is from the Sound Money Defense League, uh, where they're trying to get uh, some states, coins and uh, 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 bullion are treated just like uh, 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 property, you know what I mean, like jewelry. So they have to file forms, they have to hold it for two weeks. That's a whole bullshit law, and I'm going to get into that as well. Uh, the holding periods that some of you people in some states have to deal with, whether it's jewelry, artwork, and other. I'm going to get into that in a moment. And also, if I may point out the uh, sales tax issue, and I'm going to go to that first, all right? Uh, the sales tax issue. A lot of the states have sales tax, but thanks. And I'm going to tell you who did this. Um, Many years ago, there was no sales tax on gold and silver, and then they put gold, I th believe they put sales, it was a Governor Martinez, he did a bunch of things. This goes back in Florida quite some time ago. Governor Martinez, if you want to look him up, uh, I believe he reinstituted sales tax on precious metals and coins, and uh, uh, the state of Florida had a couple coin dealers that were very instrumental, and I'm going to give you their names right here. Uh, not very instrumental. These are the guys that got sales tax removed. It should never be forgotten that this is why all you Floridians, my local customers, you don't pay sales tax for one reason in precious metals. This is 7% now in South Florida sales tax. And I'll tell you who the heroes are. Um, and of course, he's a hero to me. Anyway, is my father, number one. Ed Kuzmar is my father. And Ed Kuzmar was one of the gentlemen that was instrumental in the lead on the sales tax fight in Florida. Uh, the next person, again, in no particular order, I just brought my dad up because it's my dad. Uh, and then uh, no particular order of importance and who did what, but uh, uh, Nick Hauser uh, from Lakeland was one of the guys that uh, uh, led the uh, sales tax fight in Florida as well. And he was very, very instrumental in finding a legislator that got the sales tax exemption put into law, okay? And I'll explain how that happened to you in a nutshell in a minute. Then you've got Bill Youngerman out of, out of Boca Raton. Uh, I've known Bill for 30, 40 years, upstanding gentleman. You've got, uh, uh, and then Larry Lee, Larry Lee in Panama City. Larry Lee passed away not too long ago, but Larry Lee, uh, one of the most upstanding gentlemen. Uh, all these guys that I talked about, except for my father. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, my father's a great guy, too. Uh, again, every father's, you know, you know how that goes. But uh, uh, all these gentlemen, upstanding guys, Larry Lee, uh, uh, William Youngerman, uh, Nick Hauser, Ed Kuzmar, these are, these are guys that were very instrumental in getting sales tax removed in Florida 20, 30-plus years ago. Uh, and I can tell you, because I watched it and I also helped a little bit myself as well, I contributed to that fight too as well and helping them guys out. Um, one of, and actually, I was the one that first found out that they were putting sales tax on gold and silver. I, I was reading something at my father's store when I was working for him as a younger man, and uh, I remember he was at a show and I called him up and he, he kind of went a little ballistic and uh, uh, he told Bill Youngerman, he told all the guys, they all got together and they did something about it. And what did they do? Well, I'll tell you the funny part is, is for three and uh, for three or four years, we, we had ponied up approximately 30 grand to give a lobbyist every year to lobby to have a uh, exemption for sales tax. Every year, the lobbyist would take the 30 grand and he didn't do shit, all right? Oh, I'm sorry, we almost got there this year. Um, Nick Hauser, and I don't remember the specific, 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 specific names, Nick Hauser, who was one of the instrumental guys in getting a sales tax removed, had found a legislator that said that he'd be willing to do that for us. And uh, 
Um, I think that once he became willing to remove that sales tax, uh, a lot of people in the coin business donated to his uh, campaign. And again, it wasn't, I don't think it was planned like that, nobody said that, but everybody was very appreciative of this legislator that did that, and I think he did get money for his campaign, which probably equaled that 30 grand that they were giving to uh, uh, the uh, lobbyists, which jawboned everybody and told them they were, lobbyists suck, man. Uh, they suck your money if that's what they is. But anyways, make a long story short, it took a direct payment to, to a, a legislator to get the uh, bill put through instead of a lobbyist who was just going to milk them for their money for years and years. And you can thank Ed Kuzmar, uh, William Youngerman, Nick Hauser, and uh, uh, oh, geez, Larry Lee out of Panama City uh, for the guys that get rid of your sales tax. They saved Floridians hundreds of millions of dollars. I'd even say beyond that. They've, then this is this is because of uh, the hard work they did uh, 20 and 30 years ago. Most of you don't know this, and I wanted to bring this up here as well. Uh, one of the things they also talk about here is in some states, not in the state of Florida, in some states, uh, pawn shop. For example, you're familiar with pawn shop laws, which are complete bullshit, by the way. You know the pawn shop holding period laws that are out there. You know where they got to hold stuff for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. That's a complete nonsense bullshit law. I'm surprised it's lasted this long, but the reason it's lasted this long because it's given pawn shops a monopoly, more or less, on uh, on that business and uh, and a, and, a, and, a, and a license to steal is basically what it gave the pawn shop guys and for their willingness to give up their customer's name. But the original holding period laws, this is true, came out of Florida first. Again, Governor Mar Martinez. There was, a, there was a legislator in Cocoa Beach who had his mother's silverware set stolen, okay? And when his mother's silverware set stolen, uh, well, hold on, let me back up a little bit. Prior to holding period laws and the requirements that you had to hold stuff and all the stupid draconian rules in the pawn business and the holding period business, again, stupid, useless, uh, I can go on and it's the truth, but uh, uh, prior to that, there used to be a great network amongst pawn shops and legitimate dealers of you know buying and selling is if something was stolen the cops would come in they would say hey listen can you pass this around if this person shows up you call us and that and it really worked there was a network amongst pawn shops and dealers and people that bought and sold from the public uh, that we would call each other and tell each look out for this, look out for this, and and lo and behold, once in a while we'd catch the guys. You'd call the police and say he's in my shop now, uh, and it worked. It was effective, and then also, uh, and police used to do stings too, where they'd go to a, a pawn shop or another shop and see if they would knowingly buy stolen goods, and if they did, they'd put them in jail. And I say, good, 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 good. They don't do that anymore. They got lazy because of legislation, but I'm going to get into that. So. Uh, uh, Governor Martinez legislation um, uh, uh, was, was created uh, for a holding period in the state of Florida because of a uh, legislator from Cocoa Beach, his mother's sterling silver set was stolen and ended up in a pawn shop. So this, this legislator had a great idea that, well, if I hadn't got there in time, they would have sold it. So why don't we make all the pawn shops in Florida and secondhand dealers hold stuff for two weeks, all right? Brilliant idea, all right? And Martinez, of course, at the time, Martinez was passing all kinds of crappy bills and stuff. Nobody liked him. Uh, he didn't make it in the office again either. But uh, um, uh, so that's where your holding period laws came from, and they were abusive. In fact, we went and got coins exempt because coins were included. Rare coins and bullion were included in Florida on the hold on the hold status. And guess who did that fight too? Ed Kuzmar, William Youngerman, uh, uh, Nick Hauser, and. Uh, uh, Larry Lee from Panama City. Those are the heroes also for getting coins and bullion knocked off that hold period. Could you, can you imagine if you went to sell your gold like poor pawn people do or pawn shop uh, customers have to do and, and gold dealer had to hold it for two weeks therefore he gave you 50 percent less? That's what pawn dealers do. Um, so no it wouldn't work man. It would have it destroyed the bullion business in Florida uh, and also uh, uh, you know holding bullion uh, so you can prove if a Krugerrand got stolen, you would not be able to tell one Krugerrand from another. So the law was such nonsense anyway, uh, but they bullied it through. That law ends up being in a lot of states across America. Again, it's a bullshit law, all right? Uh, because the cops never, never, hardly ever get anything done by looking at those stolen lists, and I know this. The state of Florida produced their own uh, reports by the Police Chiefs Association of Florida that this is during Martinez's time. When Martinez made this law, th listen to this. Even the Police Chiefs Association came out and said less than 1% of 1% of stolen merchandise ends up in pawn shops. 
This is true. You know where most of it ended up at? Flea markets, which they never regulated at all. I mean, not that they could or anything, but um, when once the cops had gotten that license to have the pawn dealers do all the work for them and hold everything for them, they stopped doing stings. They stopped getting the cooperation from the dealers they used to get. So the whole holding period law, I will debate anyone in this country that thinks that law is a good idea. I will debate them and I will put them down on the ground, folks, because that law is a complete bullshit law. In fact, I'm going to go one stretch further. The holding period laws in many of the states you see, even in Florida with pawn shops now, coins and bullion are exempt because of the guys I told you about. But I feel bad for the uh, pawn shop dealers. And here's the worst part about pawn shops. Pawn shops deal with the people that are hurting the most. Pawn shops, if you have to hold a piece of gold or a piece of jewelry for two weeks or a month, some of these guys hold it for three weeks and a month before they can sell it, you're taking big market risk in gold and silver for the most part. Uh, it also gives you a license to steal as well. So there's a little bit of two here going on. Uh, so you're, you're taking a big risk, okay? And uh, uh, so you're going to discount the product substantially, like the problem I told you what would have happened with bullion. So, but the problem with that is guess who gets screwed? The consumer. The little old lady who couldn't pay her rent that month that's got to sell her engagement ring or bring her engagement ring in, which is mostly gold, uh, and instead of getting $200 for it because there's $250 worth of gold in it, uh, the pawn dealer has to hold it for two, three weeks. Uh, he's going to now offer $125 on it. Who gets screwed on that, folks? The consumer, because of nonsense, bullshit holding periods. And again, I'll debate any lawyer, I'll debate any cop, any judge any politician on this issue and uh, it needs to be told anyways uh, and there's way better ways of doing it in the old days than with these uh, with these dracon first off it's none of your business you shouldn't have to give an id because grandma sell grandma goes in to sell her ring or sell her jewelry she's got to give an id and a thumbprint folks really and let me tell you something else about these holding laws in the state of florida we have these holding laws for pawn shops again secondhand dealers uh, uh coins and bullion are exempt but we have these holding laws they're, they're such bullshit. i tell you what i saw the other day or, or no two years ago i saw that they exempted golf clubs you know why they exempted golf clubs because those rich motherfucking lawyers and judges that that don't want to give their IDs and thumbprints for uh, golf clubs but they don't mind your grandmother having to give it up for her fucking wedding band all right I did my F's for the day. Sorry about that. Very passionate about this, folks. Um, you guys, you poor people out there have had the wool pull over your eyes so many times by government politicians. And, uh, uh, you know, again, I'm a big supporter of police. They just do what they're told. And most cops are really good. So I've got a lot of friends that are police officers. So I'm not going to drag on police. Uh, unfortunately, like bad coin dealers and bad bullion dealers, it all it takes is a small amount of bad cops to make them all look bad. So we all have that issue. Uh, but again, politicians, and uh, I'm not even going to bag on judges for the most part. The politicians that created these laws, these holding period laws, sales tax laws, they suck. They suck. All right. And the laws themselves they created suck. They're worthless. They don't work. All right, holding periods. I'm done with it. <laughs> uh, ZH, okay. Let's go into ZH real quick. And uh, uh, you know what? I'm just going to go off on a couple rants because I got that passion built up right now, and I don't want to do that. But I will kind of give my... Uh, uh, oh, look, look at this. I don't think so. Funds moving away from old analog gold to BC. That, I like Vince, and I like what he writes, the BBL writes, uh, but uh, I think uh, that's a pie in the sky. Uh, again, Bitcoin is a casino. It's a very volatile casino. You own nothing. It's almost like a digital poker game that's uh, encrypted. So, <laughs> uh, And the thing with crypto is that, uh, again, a couple whales pull out, a couple big, uh, you know, get BlackRock or whoever these big uh, institutions that are now involved with it, they're going to just, they're just going to monkey hammer the shit out of that market or, or the players, the small players in that market. Well, anyway, let me move down here and... Uh, uh, no, uh, gosh, nothing but shit news out here. I'm sorry about that. Shit people, shit news. <laughs> shit people and shit news, all right? I'm sorry. Uh, I told you, I got a little passionate about that last one, didn't I? I'm going to take a deep breath and a sip of coffee. Hang on. <sighs> all right. <laughs> hmm. There we go. Feeling much, much calmer. Uh, well, anyways, it's same old shit right here, folks. We're not going to go into some of this stuff. I don't see too much that uh, everything, even bad news,
bad, you know, political news, economic news, all ties into the price of gold. The worse society gets, the higher metal prices are going to go. The worse the economy gets, the higher prices of metals are going to go. So all this stuff is actually, God, I hate to say positive for metals, but it really is. Uh, wow. Okay. You know, we're going to benefit from the stupidity of uh, people that double down on stupid like this person right here and like this person right here. People that double down on stupid. They never admit they're wrong, they just double down on their stupidity, like this guy, uh, and especially this guy. Well, anyways, <laughs> I guess I said enough today, didn't I? I'm gonna kind of move out of here. Uh, Fed's favorite inflation in indicator spikes to almost 40 year highs, real spending flat. Um, uh, very interesting there, but you know, this is all stuff we know and we talk about every day. Uh, I'm going to kind of leave it at that. I think our big story today was sales tax and holding periods. Uh, I'm going to leave it at that right now and move into yesterday's video. Everybody, it, it, whether you love Elon Musk or you hate him, it, it's got two types of people out there. It seems like you, you love him or they hate him. There doesn't seem to be an in between with this. Uh, not too much. God, look at that weather yesterday, too. Wow. Uh, uh, just as nice as today. God, I love Florida. I love living down here. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Please, folks, if you get a chance, I know a lot of you watch my videos all the time, uh, uh, but uh, some of you aren't really subscribed. If you could hit that subscribe button, it does help. It helps get my videos out there even more, which helps me personally, you know, on a business standpoint, because the whole point of my videos is to drive in more local business. Some of you don't live in my area, and I do encourage you to find a good local dealer, um, because, again, it's all about keeping your money in your community, or at least in your state, even if you have to drive an hour or two to find a good dealer. Uh, keep that money in your state, folks. I can't tell you how important that is. Um, as far as uh, 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 me, if you want to deal with me, you have to drive to Florida and come to my neighborhood here. I don't do any online shipping. But again, if you can't do that, find yourself a good local guy, please. I advertise to be at Max JM and SD Bullion. And let's take a look at the comments here. Um, man, a lot of nice things. I, you know, I can't tell you how much I really appreciate all the nice comments that you guys give me and, and then even the tough comments and even the ones that are kind of critical of what I'm saying. Uh, most of you all, not most of you, you're all very cool. Even the people that are critical of my comments are always respectful and I never see any uh, nonsense uh, that you see in other places and other forums. Uh, thank you, Z, Heart of Texas, William Fender. Um, Elon is selling off Tesla to keep his space program going. Um, I really like the space program. I don't know what kind of profits are involved with that, but man, I'm, you know, I'm a Robert Heinlein fan, as you guys know, <laughs> uh, and uh, space stuff just uh, fascinates me. I come from that generation, man. I, I saw the first step on the moon. My mother called me in from the backyard to watch it uh, when the uh, first step for mankind or something like that. Heart of Texas, hey, what's up, man? Uh, Fort Amazon, a couple in Rivian. All right, you know what? Let's just, I wonder if uh, I can pull up Rivian here, because I told you guys I would do that, and I've heard that from a couple people already. Uh, let's see if I can find, uh, where is my transportation, and uh, uh, where we go, add. Let's see if Rivian pops up. One second, I'm kind of curious now that you mentioned Rivian, I have heard their name. Rivian Automotive. Well, sir, it is done. I have added Rivian next to Ford there, and uh, I will follow, oh, sorry about that, and I will follow them, $96 stock. Wow, I didn't imagine a small startup is worth more per share. Well, I guess not. Uh, number of shares is important. Well, anyway, I'm learning like you are, folks. Hey, thanks for that little heads up there, uh, uh, Heart of Texas. Uh, Merry Christmas, and God bless you all as well. As a, uh, uh, I got to tell you, uh, when it comes to religion, I am not, uh, I'm a, uh, what, what's the word I was looking for? I'm the guy that doesn't know. I'm agnostic. Is that the right word? Uh, don't know yes or no, but uh, I'm not going to say uh, <laughs> it doesn't. And uh, But anyways, how did I get off on that like this? Uh, odd tangent right there. But God bless you all as well. So um, thank you for liking my level-headed views too. <laughs> uh, thank you. And finally, someone talking about B3. This will go in place for the USA. What does this all mean? I'm excited. Uh, yeah, well, the, the Basel 3, what I was talking about yesterday is is – is that's 2014 when they institute but think about that as after 2012 the economic collapse in the united states and the dollar was getting really uh viewed uh critically and we we're you know less and less people were using the dollar more countries are going outside the dollar and dealing amongst themselves directly and again you know direct you know russians and stuff they're getting away from de-dollarizing because we weaponize the dollar uh 
the, the, it was very interesting to see them do the uh, uh, make gold a tier one asset because it was typically, as I think someone mentioned in here, it was always U.S. dollars and treasuries were considered tier one assets. I don't know what other things were, but they added gold in uh, to an asset that is equal to the dollar and treasuries. And actually, we all know it's superior to it, but why did they do that? What was the reason? All right, let's move along here. Silver Loving Lou, thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Jeff Skinner, um, pretty sure Bitcoin is in the tier one asset, and I agree 100%. Bit, Bitcoin would be, uh, uh, it's not a bit, uh, yeah, there's no way. Uh, but it's interesting, folks. Uh, years ago, and nobody talks about it. I'd like to see some more of the uh, talking heads and uh, about silver and gold talking about what was the implication of adding gold as a tier one uh, asset? Why did they do it? I'd like to see some more in-depth discussion on that out there. Uh, amongst other guys as well. Uh, maybe we'll try to get into it. Uh, again, that would probably be speculation on why they did it, but maybe there's uh, data out there that says, hey, we needed to do it because we were afraid of the dollar. We were afraid of treasuries, so we added gold. Maybe. I don't know. Ah, uh, Guy, yeah, the weather's absolutely crazy, beautiful here. Uh, this is why we live in Florida this time of year, specifically in two feet of snow. You know what, though? I haven't seen snow in ages. <laughs> I'd like to go out and get a little cold day or two, you know, a nice little change for me. Uh, if I could swap places for you with, with a couple days, I would, guy. So, so just a change. It's nice to have a change. Uh, hey, Joey, what's up? Appreciate it. One of my, yeah, uh, what was it, National Lampoon's uh, Christmas Vacation. That was a great, great uh, scene right there. Dad, how'd you ever make it through all the holidays with the family? Well, Clark, I had a lot of help from Jack Daniels. <laughs> oh, that was a blast. You, that made me laugh when I read that. Uh, great part of the movie. That was a great movie, too. Uh, Chevy Chase was funny as hell. Another great video. Uh, thank you, sir. Hager. Thank you, Celtic Knot. Uh, Ducat, silver bar for you. Uh, interesting comment here, uh, as you folks can read. Michael Matthews, uh, uh, dem demented uncle. Hey, I'm a demented uncle as well, sir. I guess we share something in common. Uh, there are three tier one assets, according to the bank, BIS. Uh, the U.S. dollar, U.S. treasury, and gold. That's actually where I got my thought of when uh, I just mentioned it to... Uh, uh, thanks for pointing that out. U.S. dollars, U.S. Are there any other tier one assets besides that, or is it just those three items? I'm curious as well. But thank you very much for your comments, sir, and thank you for watching, and happy holidays to you. Um, yeah, at some point, the U.S. dollar is going to revert to its inherent fiat value. We all know that. Fiat, there's no, the United States dollar is the longest surviving fiat currency in history, and that's been since 1972. Uh, good to see some people still nailing it. You're not talking head. We have never seen your head. <laughs> you don't want to see my head. Trust me. <laughs> I'm only teasing, but, uh, well, maybe not. Uh, yeah, I'm hideous, man. I'm like the, uh, oh, man, who's that guy that played the piano? Uh, the, not the Hunchback. <laughs> uh, what movie was that? The, uh, no, anyways, all right. No, I'm hideous, really. You don't want to see my head. Uh, Billy Hurst, uh, Merry Christmas, you and your family. Uh, hey, if you're in Boca, come by. I grew up in Boca, actually. That's my, that's my old stomping grounds. Went to school there as well. Uh, you rather have gold and silver paper stocks versus physical gold. Not quite sure what that question is, but thanks for commenting, Robert. Uh, Chris Dutcher, what's up, dude? Um, um, think for yourself and always question authority. Agree 100% and happy holidays to you as well. And Robert Label. Uh, oh, PSS and EX key. You're giving me a hunt, uh, hint there. Uh, I'll take a look at that as well. Let me see. I'll copy that in and do it after the show. Thanks. Uh, White Tigress, uh, when your hands feel weak about holding your precious metal, just remember that Venezuela had one of the best stock markets in the world during the hyperinflation. In the end, gold always wins. That's true. And Joe Rock, thanks for watching. And White Tigress, uh, anyone in the right mind would take gold over treasuries. People are catching on in the USA. That was, yeah, that's what I was thinking, Joe, is that, uh, you know, why? Why did they all of a sudden add treasuries? Uh, again, I think it's just because they knew there might be a big problem with treasuries in the U.S. dollar. They had better add something in there. And what better to add? Again, it wasn't going to be cryptos, was it? Uh, wasn't going to be the ruble. Wasn't going to be the Chinese yen. What would be, not the yen, uh, one. Uh, what would be the ideal thing to add? Gold. Even they know it. What do you think central banks hold? They don't hold crypto. They don't hold dollars. They don't hold, they hold gold. All right? That's why they added it, because it's real money. Well, hey, that's it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. I don't have my closing thing here, dark on it. Uh, here, let me see if I can find it. One second. Oh, there's Fred. <laughs> I use that here. Commercial. Here's how you find me. Do a, do a search like this. I automatically pop up in the search bar, and there I am. Hey, Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins. Happy uh, Thursday, and uh, I might or might not do a show tomorrow. I'll let you know, see what, what I get done. I am closed tomorrow, too, by the way. And uh, let's see what happens with the markets tomorrow. So maybe I'll do a quickie. Well, that's it. Brian Kuzma, Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. If you live in my area and you want to do business, I call me anytime at 954-493-8811. If you don't live in my area, please, folks, find yourself a good local dealer. Try not to ship that money out of your state. 
uh, try to keep it in town. Uh, plus, you're going to need to sell this stuff one day, so you're going to have to find a good uh, developer relationship with someone that you may want to sell to. Develop a relationship locally. That's all I can say. Uh, and again, if you live in my area, I'm a great guy to, deliver, uh, to, to, to start a relationship with uh, when it comes to your precious metals, rare coin business, and other business, too. We do jewelry, artwork, antiques, and other things as well. Hey, that's it. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, all that other good stuff. Uh, if I don't uh, talk to you tomorrow, uh, this will be my, um, yeah, this will be my happy holidays to you. All right, folks, take care. Talk to you soon.